Self-storage is big business and can help us create space in our overcrowded homes. Look at all these! But some have taken their storage hoarding too far. Sugar puffs, 18 years old. Clinging on to things they never see or use. This is my life in a box, isn't it? And it's costing them a fortune. I've spent £80,000 or thereabouts on storage. I'm Maggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. You actually paid money for this. It's nice when it's lit up. I'll be asking hoarders to open the doors of their units, <laughs> empty out their stash... I wish I was like that! <laughs> ..and choose to either keep it... I'm feeling a little emotional. ..skip it or sell it. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden gems... Yes, that's what I like to see, man. ..to take to auction and make some hard cash. In today's show, our hoarders struggle to say goodbye to the past... This is of emotional value to you. ..reach breaking point as they argue over what to skip and what to sell... I'm too scared to chuck stuff out cos they get told off. ..and unearth some hidden gems. Yes! Excellent. Welcome to Storage Hoarders. I'm in West London to help two hoarding couples in denial break the habit and turn their prized possessions into hard cash. Our first hoarder in need is Gary and his partner in clutter crime, Paul. Unbeknown to them, they've spent around £3,000 clinging on to things they haven't seen for over three years. So what made Gary and Paul choose to use storage? We took out the storage unit uh, initially just to, to clear some of the clutter from the bolt. Moored on the picturesque Grand Union Canal just 15 miles from the centre of London, Gary and Paul have lived on their idyllic but tiny houseboat for 12 years with pet parrot Billy. Is that nice, Bill Bill? Space on their cramped quarters is proving a problem, leaving many of their possessions high and dry in the storage unit. Well, no, we're not getting rid of the table and chairs. It's not coming back here. Why not? Because they're... Because <laughs> they're horrible. They're fashionable. Fashionable. But the problem here is bigger than a lack of cupboards. Gary is a spendaholic. I think I have a habit of, of buying gadgets. He buys things and then he, he doesn't know he's bought it. I maybe buy something yesterday and today he's forgot he's even had it. Something new comes out and I think, oh, I really want this. Um, but very quickly you end up with a, a collection of possessions that you, you don't really need. <laughs> Confessions of a shopaholic. <laughs> Gary's love of retail therapy has seen their storage problems overspill into the car park with a novel way to store even more unwanted clutter. Now this has sort of turned into my other new storage unit. But it's just become another dumping ground for more debris from the boat, from clothes and household appliances to even the odd fly swatter. They'll say, oh, we should get rid of the storage unit, or we should get rid of the motor on because we don't use it. But, and I'll say, oh, well, let's do it. But nothing ever gets done. Paul is desperate for help convincing Gary to stop frittering away money, storing things they just don't need. I think we should get rid of you, and then there'll be plenty of room. He says it's a waste of money, but he never does anything about it. I'm off to the gym. Without saying that, I wouldn't go as far as to say I have a problem with hoarding, but, uh, but we still have a storage unit where I have things that I'm keeping. <laughs> Can I convince Gary to get rid of his storage hoarding ways and stop spending money on things he doesn't need? So, out of you two, who is the hoarder? You, Gary, is the hoarder. No, that's not true. Look at the guilt written over the face. <laughs> anyway, carry on. There's your Nana's tables. And all your rubbish. It's not rubbish. <gasps> Did you hear that? All your rubbish. And all my luxurious kitchen equipment. So, your staff's valid and his isn't. Is this what you're saying? There's a few things that could probably go. So why have you got the cooking stuff in storage? We moved off the boat, but we ended up putting the stuff into storage and that's where it stayed. And then we went and bought more stuff. Why didn't you come to the storage unit? Where's the fun in coming to the storage yeah. unit? It's much more fun going shopping. Every month, presumably, you get the bill for this. How much is it? I think it's about 60, 70 quid. Isn't it interesting? You don't actually know, do you? It's money well spent for our valuables. <laughs> do you know how much you spent? So far, I mean, you must be getting up to oh. maybe, a thousand, your mouth. maybe a thousand pounds or a bit more, maybe. Well, they might not know, but I do. Time goes faster than you think. I know it's okay. Do you know that you've spent three thousand um, pounds? How do you feel now? It is, it is quite a lot of money, actually. It's all gone, it's all spent. 
but it's not going to carry on, is it? No. 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 Okay, come on, let's do it. Okay. Today's other storage hoarders in need are a couple Robert and Catherine. They've spent £2,800 hanging on to stuff they've hidden away for years. So why did they decide to succumb to storage? We, we got the storage because we had accumulated too much stuff in our previous house, which we were wanting to put on the market. And quite a lot of the stuff might have been a bit scary for potential buyers. <laughs> Culture vultures Robert and Catherine might live in the suburban heart of leafy southwest London, but they've spent the past seven years travelling the world together, indulging in their shared passion for collecting. I think when I first met Robert, all my possessions were in three boxes. So he has to take uh, responsibility for having encouraged me to hold on to things. I am by nature a hoarder. Robert's collecting has spread to every corner of their home. This is uh, the room in which we keep all, all of, nearly all of our CDs. And we also have boxes of CDs stored under the bed. This is about one third or so of the Russian CDs. I did a rough count um, and, and we've got over 4,000. <laughs> Catherine is insistent it's time to put a cap on their hoarding lifestyle. We both think we should get rid of stuff, but we don't necessarily agree on the same items. I, I think I'll f find it harder to part with things than Catherine. And they both have different ideas about why they need to empty their unit. If we were to make some money out of selling the objects in there, I think probably we would plan a new adventure. It will pave the way for further collecting, I'm sure. <laughs> I want to find out if Robert is ready to wave bon voyage to storage forever. What is it about the collecting? What do we like about it? Yeah. Mm. It's the adventure of it. Mm. It's like a treasure hunt, you know, when you're a kid and you're looking for a hidden treasure. Mm. It's just like that. And you dig through looking for something that appeals or excites you and you think, ah, mm. oh, this is just what I need. Need or want? Need, in, in quotation marks. Yes. <laughs> yes. And how long have you had these items in storage? Mm, I think we've had them a couple of years. I personally haven't been to the lockers. I've been a few times. So what do you want to do about this? Well, I figure we've had this locker for two years. We pay 100 a month. And I think, why are we doing this? Yes. It's time to empty it out, to find out what's in there, and to move on. Can you remember everything that you've got in there? I wouldn't like to claim I could remember all of it, but I have a pretty clear memory of some of the things I put in there, I think. I'm excited about it. I don't like to have stuff stored away that I'm not using or can't see. Or... It sounds to me like you're gung-ho, you're really on for this, and you're slightly more hesitant, would I'm that be hesitant, right? I'm more hesitant, yes. There are things in there that I'm sorry to part with. OK, so do you think the time has come? I feel certain it has, Fantastic. Yeah. And do you think it would have come without this intervention? Well, I think this is quite helpful. Mm. There's Good. nothing like a deadline and motivation. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at the units. We've met our couples in denial. It's now time to see what's lurking behind the steel doors of their storage units. Coming up... It's just rubbish. Are you serious? That's the skip pile. I'm too scared to chuck stuff out because I get told off. He's such a romantic guy. <laughs> our hoarders struggle to say goodbye to the past. Growing up, you know, we were always playing the accordions of fiddles and things. And unearth some hidden gems to sell at auction. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. We're here in West London to help two couples stop spending money, storing possessions they never see or use. Earlier, we met Paul and Gary, who opened a storage unit after their houseboat started sinking under the weight of the clutter. And Robert and Catherine, who opened a storage unit when their passion for collecting got out of control. Later, I'll be asking our antiques expert to help our couples pick out any unwanted treasures they can take to auction to recoup some of the money they've spent. It's the moment of truth. We're about to open up the storage units and see if we can turn their items into hard cash. Oh my goodness, look at, look at this stuff in here. Oh, oh my goods. Most of it, look at... There's, there's even food in the birdcage. It's, it's just rubbish. In the three years that Paul and Gary have had their unit, they've racked up a £3,000 bill, storing odds and sods from their tiny houseboat. My air gel. <laughs> Gary and Paul have the worst example of storage unit habits. 
Their stuff is randomly chucked in with no system. I'm hoping that amongst the mess there is something worth the expense. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> goodness. I like how it's all right rammed up against the drawer here. So hold on, let's see what's, what well, else we've Be careful, I wouldn't... Uh... Watch the antiques. <laughs> Less of that cheap. <laughs> Oh, that, that's, that is an electronic acupuncture set. You are a nightmare, you Whoa, are. <laughs> you really are. No, this is fantastic. Now I understand why we've got this set. I tell you what, Paul, if, he is any, the hoarder. If you've you got sciatica, anything, it'll get rid of everything. Yeah. And it's got right. an instructional video to go with it. I have got a video recorder, but anyway. And <laughs> check it out. What is, what is this what is on it? earth? You don't even know what I don't it is. Even know I what know it what it is. is. Paul what is knows it? what it is. It's a lamp, lamp isn't it? Oh, it's a solar panel. For it's a solar fan it's for a the greenhouse. Fan. We haven't got a greenhouse. Exactly. But it's for the greenhouse. <laughs> Thank you. We, we need to get rid so of no, that. No, he's as bad as me. He's keeping things for a greenhouse we don't Never even have. Never mind blaming each other. But I'm going to get a greenhouse. I'm going to get a greenhouse. Task in hand, right? I'm not actually seeing much here that's worth spending £70 a month on. Mm. Mm? Well, I thought it was well spent anyways. You didn't really. You don't. Face it. You two, sort this out, okay? Okay. okay? Right. Get to it. I've had enough of their excuses. It's time the boys get a grip on what they're storing. It's now Robert and Catherine's turn to come face to face with their storage unit. Packed away in here is a lifetime of collectibles from around the world costing Robert and Catherine £2,800 to store away. Oh look, here's the old Chinese chairs. Isn't this amazing? I haven't seen these for ages. Look at that. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? We're going to have troubles here. I wonder what's in this box here. It says fragile treasures. Goodness only knows. This is a much better system. Everything is neatly piled up, but the lack of labelling means they've forgotten what they have. However tidy, it still needs to go. Tribal Hi, things in it. Hello. This looks very organised. It's quite surprising, isn't it? I didn't expect it to be so tidy when I came. Robert's taken good care wow. of it, I can tell. Yeah. Yes, very organised, actually. So, yeah. hmm, hate to say it, but there doesn't seem to be too much stuff in here. I bet it will be in the boxes, though. What, yeah, it's like what's under, what I, is actually in I there. I sort of remember packing these things, right. and I put in everything carefully all wrapped up, you know. Okay, lots and lots of bits and but pieces. But unfortunately, I only labelled them all fragile treasures. <laughs> so I'm none the wiser. Very non-specific. <laughs> what's in there, except that I should be careful with them. A lot of them are heads. Oh, yeah, this okay. And that's the Dickens China. Dickens China. This is my aunt. She was married in the 30s and she had gave me a whole set of, when she died, of Dickens China. So did she collect this throughout her marriage or was it wedding presents? I think it was probably all wedding presents, but I don't think she ever used it. Oh my goodness me. So, so although, you know, very precious, but you would never actually use this. No, no. no. So do you know whether this set is complete? Um, I wouldn't say there's an even number of everything. I'm thinking pound signs here. Sorry, but I am. <laughs> so, Robert, are you ready for this? I'm ready for parting with the Dickens, China. I'm, I'm more in two minds about some of the African pieces. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to part with most of them. OK, I'm just seeing yeah. how twistable <laughs> this arm is here. <laughs> oh, I think it's quite twistable, yes. You need to get twisting, OK? We'll be finding out soon, won't we? Good. Yeah. I'm going to leave you to it. I want every last piece out. And you know what? I'm looking forward to seeing it as well. See you later. Yeah. See you. Thanks. Oh, what do you think is here? <laughs> to help our hoarders clear their units, I want them to divide their possessions into three categories. Either keep it if it's truly sentimental, skip it if it's truly awful, or sell it if they think it could be of value. I've also added in a charity bin into which they can put anything they don't want to throw away. So now it's time for our couples to get sorting. That's my kilts, don't get rid of that. Oh, I can tell it's the things from the horses, isn't it? I can tell by the smell. Yep, it is. That's good. It's getting mold on it. So look at this. They strap these on the horses for protection. Oh, aren't these lovely? I want our storage hoarders to get decisive and sort through every item in just three hours. So I found them a space to spread it all out. There's a lot of junk in here, I have to say. There's your canoe. I think you should take that home. I'm going to sell that. No, I don't use it. I'm frightened of water. 
Robert and Catherine have a very organised pal which shouldn't cause too much problem. Paul and Gary's pal, however, looks like the inside of a skip. With everything out, it's time to get sorting. This is sentimental anyway, as it reminds me of the bus trip I'd done three years ago. <laughs> God, this is a surprise, isn't it? I really had forgotten about this stuff. I do, I haven't. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Bin, bin, yeah, bin. But why are we keeping all of this? Skip. Paul is getting stuck in, but Gary is finding it harder to let go. Time for an intervention. Hello, how are you doing? Keep. Do you know what? If you stuck it all in a skip and off it went, it would, I, I don't think I would care. Can you say that again? <laughs> But I don't mean it. <laughs> no, hold on I don't a minute. really mean it. Hang on a minute. Are, are you serious? That's the skip pile. Well, so far. We, Hang yeah, on. Actually, this is in the wrong place. In my, in my defence, in my defence, right, Paul's the, the one who's putting... This should be in the middle of yeah. here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Good for you. Can we leave now? No. <laughs> it's got some... Sort of value, maybe. What sort of value? Yeah, but it might be a well, value. It's got emotional value. Else. It's not necessarily financial value. Okay, so I know it's crap. I mean, so, looking at it objectively, so it's this just crap. This is of emotional value to you, okay? <laughs> oh, I can really understand that. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you there. But if we give that a good old scrub, the parrots might use it. <laughs> the parrots are fine. The parrots have got what they need. This is nuts. This is we're getting nowhere. I need to see serious stuff going in that this? skip path. Put that in the skip. OK, for the next five minutes, boys, no talking, just doing, and doing fast. Come on. Don't even look through it, because you'll get hooked into it. Just chuck it. I'm too scared to chuck stuff out, because I get told off. By whom? No, why would I tell you off? Paul is the one leading this. If I make a mistake and chuck something out, he's going to get really annoyed at it. So it's easy to even, sit back. You won't even know. Yeah. Oh, right, I'm going off, and I'll tell you what. When I come back, I want a huge grape pile over there. I'm serious. Are you paying attention? This skip, you know, really concentrate. Just let it go, let it go. So these, these night vision binoculars are not something I had desperately Quite. have to keep. Quite. Thank you. OK, just get on with it now, right? No slacking. It may seem like tough love, but it's the only way to get them organised. Meanwhile, Robert and Catherine are cracking on. Their cell table is filling up nicely and the process is rekindling many lovely memories. It brings back memories of our first trip together when we visited Barcelona and we were very taken with this figure. <laughs> She's a keeper, I think. Oh, it's lovely to hear him say these things. That's why I married him, it's because he's such a romantic guy. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, my goodness <laughs> me. Just, just discovered some lovely weavings yeah. from northern Pakistan here. Oh, yes, no, they are beautiful. Are they lovely? Yeah. Yes. How do you think you're doing? Well, I think we're doing quite well. This table yeah. has more on it than our yes. keep table, doesn't yes. it? Yes. You know, assuming mm. that these things will sell and you'll at least get your money back or make more, you're potentially going to end up with quite a stash of cash here. And potentially, yeah. <laughs> do you have any specific plans for it? Um, I, th I think one of my priorities is to visit um, Argentina and Brazil, partly because I was born in Argentina and grew up in Brazil. Oh my goodness. And uh, Catherine hasn't been to either. Are you going to be collecting? I, I think we would find it very hard to not to. <laughs> right, so but, but we might be more selective than we've been do, in the do past. Do you go with empty cases when you go on holiday? We do, yes. Oh dear. <laughs> Super organised Robert and Catherine are making good progress and Gary and Paul's skip pile is growing slowly but surely. Amongst the masses of his stuff, Gary has unearthed a priceless object from his past. So it's not a particularly great accordion, but it's got a lot of sentimental value for me. My sister, Elaine, passed away last year, and we used to go to music lessons together. Growing up, you know, we were always playing the accordions and fiddles and things, and my dad bought yeah. it for me as well. Yeah. So it's, you know, it has significance for me, so... Aww. Oh, I'm gonna... <laughs> Anyway, 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 you can see the key, one of the keys has come off, uh -huh. which I don't even know if it's still plays, to be quite honest, because I haven't, um, I haven't really played it for... It's not a bad tune, actually. It sounds pretty good to me. Well, oh, I, it's better than I thought it was. Yeah. I actually thought it was um, needing retuned, so... 
So that's quite good. I completely understand why you feel so sentimental about this. It'd be nice. It'd be like, you know, if, if it's possible to do something with it, I'd like yeah. to do something with it. And what actually, I mean, I don't know how much it would cost to get that sort of thing fixed up, but if you're not spending £70 a month exactly. in storage... I think I've always intended, that's why I have kept it, yes. because I've always thought at some point I want to get it, um, get it fixed yes. up again. Sorting through his possessions has been an emotional journey for Gary. His accordion is of huge sentimental importance to him and definitely a keeper. So I've sent the boys to investigate having it restored at the accordion shop in Sunningdale. So it's quite an old... Lady, this okay, yeah, yeah. It probably dates from the late 50s, early 60s. I would, I would guess, um, okay. by its design. Piano accordions first appeared in the early 19th century but became increasingly popular in Britain from the 1920s with the fashion for the tango. Despite their highly decorative designs, pre war instruments are common and often sell for under a hundred pounds. But if you want a top-of-the-range new accordion from a well-known brand, you could be looking to pay in excess of two to three thousand pounds. Is Good it enough. worth restoring this? I mean, that's that's probably one of the questions because it has a lot of sentimental value for me. My dad bought me this accordion, so it's got okay. sentimental values as well. Um, but you know, I used to go accordion lessons with my sister, and she used to play. We used to play duets and things. So from that yes. point of view, it'd be nice to get it restored. Yes. But I am looking at it, and. It, I'm hoping it's just mainly dirt and a bit of cosmetic <laughs> stuff. Well, there's various sides of the restoration. Uh, cosmetic uh, is, is one of them. Frankly, it wouldn't cost that much to, to bring back up to a, a nice level again. Obviously, fixing the key, uh, taking the keys out, buffing up the keys and buffing up the casework. So that, that would be relatively cheap, so somewhere in, in the reach of, say, 100, 150 pounds. And it could be worth it from your point of view, yeah. from a sentimental yeah. point of view but if you were to look to sell the accordion it'd be unlikely that you'd get a return on on your your expense yeah what i don't want to do is just leave it to rot i just no. you know anyway I, do, I just need to decide what to do really i really appreciate you taking some time to look at this and that's a pleasure you have a think about it let me know what you'd like to do okay. and we'll take it from there thank you whatever gary decides to do about restoring the accordion at least he's determined it's not going to be hidden away anymore and I'm glad the boys won't be spending more money storing it. Back at the storage units and with only a few minutes to go, both couples have nearly sorted through all their stuff. Very much. Robert and Catherine have a good selection of pieces on their cell pile. However, the boys' keep pile seems to have grown. Skip, sell, well, oh, but hold on a minute. <laughs> hold on. There's an awful lot of stuff over here still. Are you actually going to get this into the houseboat? All of this was on our boat. All of this was on our boat. So that is going to go back onto our boat. Now, come on, boys. We're going to sell that. You're going to sell it? Yeah, yeah that can Why go in the sale. It was put there to keep it safe and it doesn't get smashed. Yeah. OK, well, yeah. fine. So that can go in the we'll sale. Just put part. it in there now. Yeah. And what about all these books? Come oh, no, on, no, all no, no, these books. I'm not getting rid books. of all the books. <laughs> oh, Lordy. What's this? That's a computing book. You may actually need that. If you actually need it, why has it been sitting in here because for Because I've been able to get years? to it. So I'm. <laughs> so every day of your life you be going, oh my God, where's my programming book? Can you not get this stuff off the no, web? No, you're right. Yes! I can download it now as a as a as a PDF so, or something, and some of them will just be the same. We're not here to compromise. <laughs> we're here to clear. This is your one big chance. Right, come on, everyone. We've got to get stuck in this last lot. Keeping, Keeping skipping, or selling. Okay. Them books. Them they books sell. will be sold as a package. With one last push, the boys finally reached the home stretch. Last thing. Thank you. Well, that you done really well. Thank you. I do, I do, I really do. It's been tough. Well done. Well done. Thanks. You should be proud of yourselves, actually. Mm. You're still looking anxious. Well, yeah. Just thinking about what yeah. to take back. <laughs> Our storage hoarders have organised their stuff into keep, skip, and sell piles. The next step, to find out if there's value in the pieces they want to sell. Coming up, our couples learn more about a treasured piece. That top 1% is just going into the hundreds of thousands and the millions. And say goodbye to the past as their unwanted items go to auction. James Duke, one more might help. Selling at £230. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders, where I've been helping two couples in denial of their hoarding habits open the doors of their storage units and decide whether to keep, skip or sell their belongings. 
to recoup some of their losses, I've asked antiques expert Tom Keane to look through the stuff they're willing to sell to see if there are any hidden gems. Tom has had an eye for spotting a gem since he started as an antiques dealer 10 years ago. But I think he might have his work cut out finding any buried treasure in Gary and Paul's hoard. So Tom, you've had a chance to have a good look round. What do you reckon? Well, Aggie, they don't call me Tom Keane for nothing. I can find money amongst things anywhere. Mm. Now, you've got a nice gimbal-mounted compass over there, an original mm -hmm. opera ship. Have you got any provenance for that, what ship it came off of? No, I, I bought it in a shop in Aberdeen. I know it came off a, a ship, but I've no idea oh, which ship it came Having the ship's name would yeah. increase the value what, four or five oh, times. In our case, it was the HMS. <laughs> no, I don't that's know. The one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's about... 50 or 80 pounds by itself. That's not bad. Not too bad, not too bad. This is a reproduction. Yep. The anchor light, ship's anchor light. Well, the lamp, you can always tell from these lamps with the gauge of the metal, basically how old they are. This is probably made in the 1970s, 1980s, and probably made in India. Oh. They wow. ship them out there and uh, use the same designs. It's not very valuable, but it's decorative. There's a price to it. It's probably 30 or 40 pounds, though. Had it been a real one, 150, 200 pounds, so big difference. Right. Graduated pots and pans. Mm, these are absolutely gorgeous. I like these. Where did you get these from? The poles. I got them from a car boot sale for a pound. The, the lot. whole lot the for a pound? Lot. Right, you're in profit. Yeah. <laughs> you're in profit. They're not particularly valued, but they must be worth 25, 30, 30 pounds a lot. So mm. not too bad. But the rest of it looks to me like a good car boot sale. It'll add, add up to something. You've probably got uh, 150, 200 pounds there. Not good enough to go to auction, but certainly for a car boot sale, a good day out. Mm. Well, that's about what you've got, I think. Not too exciting, but there's some money there. No, better than a kick in the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boy's storage stash may not have revealed any forgotten masterpieces, but Tom has still managed to pick out some unwanted items that could help recoup some of their storage bills. Among them, the graduated copper pans, the collection of maritime items, also going off to auction is a vintage 1970s telephone, a reproduction brass car horn, and a replica 1980s Tiffany-style lamp. First off, Tom has come up with a plan for Gary's nautical ephemera. Rather than sending them to a general auction, Hi, hey, Captain. Hi, hello, Tommy. He <laughs> thinks selling directly to a maritime enthusiast will guarantee them the highest price. John Novelli is restoring a boat that will offer days out for injured service personnel on behalf of charity the Soldiering On Through Life Trust, and he's on the lookout for some nautical finishing touches. Where should we start? Uh, uh, let's start this one. What about this? Anchor light in the front then, that's a... Uh, so... This looks like it's actually been on a, on a battleship or something, lads. <laughs> what kind of boat you got again? It's, it's just a narrow boat, oh, but uh, right. it's a bit of a battle sometimes. Okay. <laughs> John, you want to see you coming, don't you? You, yeah. don't, you want to see <laughs> a bright light coming down the river with soldering on on it. And, I definitely uh, want the lads to be noticed when they're going along, yes, definitely. I don't miss that one. John, what about this? I've got it. Well, it, uh, there's no boat the same without a bell, no, is no, it? It's give, most... give that a ring and see if it works. It's a more, OK. Oh, wow. I'll have the neighbours down in a minute. You like those two? You're going to love this. Right. The ship's binnacle oh, yeah. a with a gimbal-mounted compass for the quality. Can I take the top out, lads, and use this for going in the Thames? <laughs> Put a bit of a tube down there and, uh, and uh, I can go Dive looking in. for treasure, maybe. But that's, that's great. OK, boys, enough chat. It's time to get down to the money. Make us an offer because, you know... It, it... Uh, I don't want to take two because you lads have got it. Say 120. Do you know what? It's for charities, so I'll take a hundred quid. Oh, hey, hey lads. Oh, fantastic. Cash or check, John? Oh, what? Did the old hand go together? Check, all right. It might seem like a drop in the ocean, but the boys' unwanted collection of maritime objects has raised a healthy £100. Now it's the moment of truth. We're off to auction. A £250. We're here at John Nicholson's Auctioneers in Surrey to say goodbye to the last of our hoarder's stash. I've been helping Paul and Gary clear out their storage unit and say goodbye to their storage bills. Now it's time to sell off their unwanted items to raise some cash. So let's hope those bidders are feeling generous when the items go under the hammer. So remind me what you brought today. Got a cat lamp, a telephone and a car horn. And, and the brass 
Oh, and brass pans. Brass pans as well, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Copper, weren't they? Copper. Copper. Yes. Yeah. So you don't feel any sort of sentimentality towards your belongings? Your... No. No, in fact, you can put him up for auction as well if you like. So. Very nice. <laughs> no reserve either? No, definitely not. The moment is nearly upon us. We just have time to see what today's auctioneer, John Nicholson, makes of Gary and Paul's lots. There's very little there that's, that's special. I mean, it's not going to set the world alight. They'll make round about their estimates. It's what we call general bric-a-brac fodder. Well, let's hope Gary and Paul's lots break everyone's predictions. Have you got any expectations of um, amounts you kind of would like things to go for? I think if it all goes, it's about 155 quid uh -huh. as a top, of yeah. course. Yeah. But the bottom's probably about 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just about time for your lots to come up. So exciting. First up is the vintage 1970s telephone, which Tom estimated at between 10 and 15 pounds. Five pounds bid. Eight. 10, 12, 14 bid, at 14 pounds, 15, at 15 pounds. There we are selling 15 pounds. That's <laughs> a telephone bid. One, eight, three, <laughs> We're off to a good start as the telephone sells for Tom's top estimate of 15 pounds. Next up is the reproduction brass car horn, which Tom estimated at five to 10 pounds. 191, the brass car horn. Go on, I'll let you. Start me. £10 bid. 12 15 18 20 your bid. 22 see, it works. At 22 the ladies' bid at 22 £22, £22. great. £22 is another excellent result, doubling Tom's top estimate. The 1980s replica Tiffany-style lamp also finds a new home and adds £18 to the boys' total. Finally, it's Paul's bargain set of graduated copper pans that Tom estimated at £25 to £30. And I'm bid 30 5 40 There's my bidder at £45. £45. That's a great end to proceedings as the pans make £25 more than Tom's lower estimate. Not bad for something Paul bought for a pound at a boot sale. So you've made £100 at the auction here. What do you think of that? I'm, I'm really pleased, actually. 100 quid for four things that didn't really have any value to us, yes. really. It's been it's pretty good. You're getting rid of the unit. You've made £200. It's all good, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Definitely. And my accordion's getting restored as well. In fact, that's going to be about 150 quid. So the £200 I'll probably put towards... Yay! the restoration of the accordion. Paul and Gary had already made £100 from selling their nautical items. After commission, they also made £89.50 from their auction lots. Added to their yearly storage bill saving of £590.85, their grand total is £780.35. So, all in all, How's the experience been for you? I mean, it's a bit emotional, I have to say. I mean, I know there's a lot of junk that's been in storage, but it was it's our, our junk. junk. You're <laughs> a, a bit. bit of a softie, aren't you? A wee bit. <laughs> I think you've done really, really well. You've come an awful long way. I think it's brilliant. Mm. But we needed you to give us a, a kick. Yeah. Well, it's been great. I think we've all done it together. That's a fantastic result for Gary and Paul and should really help towards the restoration of Gary's accordion. Coming up, our antiques expert unearths some buried treasure among Robert and Catherine's stash. Early pieces of these can be worth thousands and thousands of pounds. And they bid farewell to their storage ways as the last of their hoard goes under the hammer. 200 pounds, 200 pounds to 10. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I've been helping two couples decide whether to keep, skip, or sell the contents of their units so they can wave goodbye to storage forever. Earlier, spendaholic Gary and partner Paul raised nearly £200 selling off the unwanted contents of their storage unit, as well as making a yearly saving of £590.85 on storage bills. Now it's the turn of culture vultures Robert and Catherine. They spent £2,800 on storage over the last two years. Rediscovering treasured souvenirs from their travels has rekindled some lovely memories and clearing out their unit has been an emotional experience for Robert. It brings back memories of our first trip together when we visited Barcelona and we were very taken 
with his finger. But now it's time to see if our antiques expert Tom Keane can help them identify some unwanted items that could help recoup some of their money. So, how's it going? Not too bad, Aggie. Not Impressive bad. amount of stuff, don't you think? Yeah, nice array. I can see you've got some Dalton Dickens or series wear in here, and uh, you've got quite a few pieces of it. This was making 15 and 60 pounds a plate. It's now down to about 20 pounds for a big plate, 10 pounds for a small plate, 10 pounds for a cup and saucer, but you've got quite a lot. So, how much do you think this lot's worth? Well, around 250 to 400 pounds. Not too bad. For the lot? For the lot, for the lot. What do you feel about that price? Well, Anything is better than nothing. It's sitting in the storage. Though I couldn't travel very far, I don't think, with that. Well, Clacton, Bournemouth, return trip for both of you. It's uh, a start, though. It's a start. It is indeed. It is indeed, yes. But my favourite piece of yours is a pair of Ming-style chairs here. They're quite nice. Quite a nice design to them. Quite unusual for this type of chair to have the bent wood, if you like, fold over legs. Probably late 19th century, early 20th century. And uh, these are probably worth 250, 350 pounds of the pair. You might get four or five, you get two Chinese collectors in, but uh, I want to ask a few questions about these things. Yes. These African tribal art figures. I think they're Congolese, a lot of these. Is that right? Some are Congolese, Congo Basin, others are West African, mm -hmm. I think. And where did you buy them from? Lots of different places, really. We began in Barcelona, and, and mm -hmm. then Italy. Netherlands. Pe Netherlands, London, Netherlands. Manchester. But none, <laughs> none in Africa? Uh, no. no. No, no. we've been to Africa, but, but they, they sell tourist yeah. stuff. Early pieces of these can be worth thousands and thousands of pounds. Yeah. I think these are 20th century, mid-20th century tourist pieces. I think we need a specialist to look at these, really, all this collection, because there's some nice things there, but I'm concerned that uh, mm. The values might not be there, so I hope you didn't pay thousands of pounds. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. But no? I'd be curious to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, so well, we'll find out together. So, um, you're happy to let go of these items? We've agreed on these things here that we're willing to let uh -huh. them go. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's part of the, the pleasure is just finding them and exploring and bringing them home and thinking about uh -huh. them. And if you, you want to do that, you can enjoy them for a while yeah. and then you move on and collect yes. something else. So, time to let these things go. Yep. Yes. And to we're move ready. On. Yep, yep, look, he's ready. Time to move on. Perfect. Yes. Excellent. The jury's still out on the value of Robert and Catherine's much-loved tribal objects, but Tom has identified some other great lots to send to auction, including the Dalton Dickens ware, the pair of unusual 19th century Chinese chairs along with a single chair, a pair of ornate Turkish horse bridles, a bronze medallion, and a set of Regency cutlery. Many of their items held strong memories for Robert, but hopefully they'll provide some cash for a trip to collect more new memories. Tom has picked the pieces that he thinks could claw back some cash at auction, but first we need to do a little bit more research into the African artwork. Tom has arranged to meet African antiquities expert Brian Reeves at his West London Gallery Tribal Gathering. Various collections of African art began in the 1950s and prices for early pieces have risen dramatically. These ceremonial hats originate from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Covered in sacred pangolin skin, this rare piece could fetch as much as £1,500, while these hats decorated with shells would set you back around £850 each. But what I want to know is, will there be any valuable rarities in Robert and Catherine's collection? OK, you know, thanks for coming down and showing the pieces. Um, yeah, just having a look at them, these pieces have been made for the tourist market, which is probably 99% of what you see around. We knew it was 20th century. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah. we bought what mm. we expected. That's, yeah. Well, that, that's good, because, mm. I mean, I, mm. I didn't want to disappoint. Some people, you know, I'll tell them that and they don't want to accept it. We get these sort of things coming fairly regular into the auction rooms and it's very hard to find the early, early pieces on the market and uh, when they do come along, they come on quite a high price. The ones that have got a good provenance going back, that top 1% is just going into the hundreds of thousands and the millions nowadays. Um, and that, that can creates the market for the reproductions. Increased interest in tribal objects has flooded the market with later copies, particularly masks. One way to spot a reproduction is to look at the wear and tear on the back. If it's smooth, then it's probably a fake. OK, well, help us with evaluation. What do you think this collection's worth at auction? Maybe, as a group, 500, 700, that range. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about that? No, I think that would be quite good be if quite we could happy. do that. I'd be yeah. happy with yeah. that. 
that's great. Even Brian's lower estimate of £500 would certainly help pay for Robert and Catherine's trip to Argentina. Now it's time to head back to the auction to find out how Robert and Catherine's lots do when they go under the hammer. So what are you feeling about the auction today then, Catherine? Well, I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens and it's interesting to see what all is for sale here. Does it feel strange seeing people looking at your stuff? No, no, we, we, we've detached ourselves from it now, I think. We're ready. We're ready. Do you, do you yeah. feel as if you have mm, yes. let go already? Yes, yes. Brilliant. Mm. So you feel like you're not attached to them sentimentally? No, I'm ready to move on now, yeah. So are there any pieces that you um, feel are as your kind of top earner that you want to get a really good price on? The Chinese chairs, probably. Chinese chairs. Yes. Do you have reserves on anything? Yes, on, on everything. You've got reserves on yes. everything. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's see what our auctioneer makes of Robert and Catherine's lots. It's an interesting collection. There's a bit of everything. If anything today is going to sail over its estimates, it'll be the African art. But if, if we've got a question mark, let's question mark the chairs and let's question mark the, uh, the Dalton. Have you got an idea in mind of a uh, total sum? Yes, I think assuming that all goes well and that everything sells for a reasonable price and after we pay commission and things, we're, we would be happy if we could take away a £1,000. £1,000, that's a great sum to aim for. The big okay. trick is to prevent him from buying anything today, yes, though, yes. I think. Well, I'll hold Same this arm yes. <laughs> and you hold the other arm. We'll be Good fine. Idea. The first item up is the collection of Dalton and Dickensware China, which Catherine inherited from her aunt. Tom has estimated it at 250 to 400 pounds. There's a large quantity of this Dalton series where 80 or 90, 200, 200 pounds. At 200 pounds to 10. Wanted a little bit more, but I'm selling at 210 pounds. Thank you. Happy with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Although it failed to reach the estimate, that's still a good amount to add towards Robert and Catherine's travel fund. Robert and Catherine's second lot is a pair of unusual Ming chairs, estimated at between 250 and 350 pounds. 210, 220, 230, 240, 250 bid. Your bid at 250. Fantastic. <laughs> the chairs sell for Tom's lower estimate, but it's still a good result. The single Chinese chair also sells for Tom's estimate of £100, while the Turkish horse bridles sell for £30, the bronze medallion makes £35, and the Regency cutlery makes £50. We come to this interesting collection of African sculpture. The auctioneer has divided the African art into two lots to maximise their potential and valued each lot at between £100 and £200. Start me, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 140, 160, at 160. Selling my bidder at 160 pound. My bidder. Yes. Excellent. With the first lot selling midway between the top and bottom estimates, let's hope the second lot does as well. 100 bid. 120, 140, 160, 180, 200, at 200 pounds. At 200 pounds, 220, 230. Your bid then, sir, against you, one more might help, selling at 230 pounds. That is spectacular amazing. Finish. amazing. That was great, it beat the reserve. That's a fantastic result as the remaining African objects raise £30 above Tom's top estimate. Some additional items Robert and Catherine brought from home also raised them another £330. So, Catherine and Robert, that was some result. That's great. Great outcome for this, I think. I know. Yeah. It's how it's meant to happen. It's fantastic, <laughs> it is, actually. Yeah. So, were you surprised by how well any of the items did? Well, I think we were really pleased. I think the African things did really they well. They very well. We were not certain the Royal Dalton China would sell, but it sold for a good price in the end, so yeah. we're happy. With their success today, the pounds have really been piling in. After commission, they made £1,234.57 at auction, They've also saved a yearly storage bill of £1,339.26, which makes a grand total of 
pounds 83 pence. So all you need to do now is think about when you're going to go on that holiday. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Well, we'll wait till we have the money in hand <laughs> and then we'll give some serious consideration to when the next trip mm -hmm. comes. So thinking about the whole experience from start to finish, how's it been? Well, I think the whole experience has been really interesting, but the outcome is completely 100% successful because we've emptied the storage locker, mm -hmm. we've sold the things we wanted to sell, mm -hmm. so I think overall it was a very good experience. We're not having to take stuff back home again. <laughs> yes, yes, I would have been disappointed if I had to take things home today. Mm -hmm. So you've got rid of your storage fees, Please don't tell me you'll be bringing back loads of stuff from Argentina. Well, what I hope we'll bring back is memories and stories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those are quite easy to store, I find. Yes. <laughs> That's brilliant news for Robert and Catherine and should really help pay for that trip to South America. So there you have it. Our couples are no longer in denial of their hoarding habits, plus they have a bit of extra cash to put towards their dreams. Don't forget to join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders. Mm -hmm.